Everyone asks us about Bitcoin, but no one asks any of this about the current system. Why is that? Why is it? Why is there just one money, the hardest money in the world, to be asked this question? But it's not asked by anyone else. No one asks, hey, why are all of these things failing? But yet when it comes to Bitcoin, everything, everything is taken down with a microscope and looked at and examined. Isn't the same, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result, the definition of insanity? Yet we continually do this for hundreds of years. We just, you know what? Government, as Liz Warren said, government is what gives money that's credibility. Really? Really? It doesn't seem too credible to me. It doesn't seem too credible at all. In fact, it's just fiat. It's just a narrative. The great narrative Klaus Schwab wrote. It's just flapping gums. It's just Elizabeth Warren get up there and saying it's got the leaders, presidents, prime ministers saying it's got credibility. That's it. Literally, if 1%, 5%, 10% of people tomorrow woke up and said the dollar is worthless, it'd be worthless. No amount of military, no amount of oil, petrodollars, no amount of anything, flapping gums, no amount of fiat decree that is going to change that. Money has to be a store of value. It has to hold up on its own. It can't just be told to people that it's actually valuable. That means it's a rug pull. So why? Why? I'm asking this facetiously or rhetorically. I, I think I know the answer why, but I want you to answer the question. Why? Why is this hardest money to ever be discovered in human history? Why is this constantly told? We're told, oh, it's the worst. It's terrible. Oh, it's a Ponzi scheme. Oh, it's a casino. It's terrible for the environment. When we know all these things for 14 years have been completely beaten in the ground. Every objection has been handled uh, to infinity and beyond. Been totally fine. It couldn't be uh, more wrong, all these people. Oh, it's a bubble. Oh, it's dead. Over and over. Proven wrong. Proven wrong. Showing their really, you know, Bitcoin doesn't, you don't change Bitcoin. Bitcoin changes you and it exposes people for who they really are. It exposes people's true intentions. So how is this still a thing? How good is knowing asking this about the current system and the system they live in? But yeah, it's always asked about Bitcoin and people still to this day don't see it. And we still have, you know, albeit good adoption rate of Bitcoin, people transforming going and moving to it, an actual hard money, an asset instead of liabilities, which is fiat currencies, we do have a good adoption rate. But still, why isn't the entire universe seen this? It's very obvious. Money is not just a piece of paper or a number on a screen. Money is an economic container for your time and energy and has to be a store of value. Has to be. It absolutely has to be that store of value, like we mentioned earlier, or what's the point? What's the point of any of it at the end of the day? A store of value that allows you to trade your time and energy for goods and services has to be. However, traditional fiat currencies are containers with holes in them. Think about that. Inflation steals your time and energy over time and funnels it to the governments, to the unproductive class, to the overlords. The value of fiat currency decreases over time, making it harder for you to buy the same amount of goods and services. Printing of currency through bailouts and quantitative easing is the scam that banks, central banks, and governments play on all of us. They steal our time and energy through inflation while we are left with nothing but less purchasing, less purchasing power and more debt. It's a very simple equation. And this is a model I drew up a while back, and it's one of my favorites, to be quite honest, because it shows exactly what is happening. It shows us exactly what is going on and why... We continually run with this scam. I have no idea. Your time and energy is your work. It's your wealth. And you pour it into a bucket. What kind of bucket do you want to pour it into? One with finite containers, perfect trade, finite time for a finite asset? Or are you going to keep doing this and pouring your finite time and energy into a bucket with a hole in it, an inflationary hole in it, which is fiat, all these fiat currencies? It's your choice. It's your choice. What world are you going to keep living in? This is a world of too much month at the end of your money. This is a world where pensions, 401ks, everything's going bust, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid. This is a world where you cannot retire. As evidence with the French, they keep raising retirement ages. That's going to happen here. It's going to happen everywhere. This is so predictable. It hurts. And yet people just continue doing the same thing. Everyone, everyone wants to cry and whine about money, cry and whine about, oh, I should be getting paid more, oh, this and that, oh, no, don't have enough money to do that. But for some reason, it's easier for an average person to just sit back and do nothing. Sit back and do nothing, cry and whine and try to vote their way into prosperity. 
that ain't ever going to happen. And instead, you have a perfect trade of yourself. You have a finite asset for your finite time and energy. It's the most beautiful trade we've ever seen in our life. Bitcoin is a finite container of money that is perfectly equal to your time and energy. Uh, unlike fiat currencies, Bitcoin doesn't leak any of your time and energy and holds and grows your purchasing power over time. Bitcoin is a decentralized digital currency that uses cryptography to secure transactions and control the creation of new units. It is a peer-to-peer -peer system that operates without a central authority or middleman. This means you are in control of your money and don't have to rely on banks, central banks, or governments to manage it for you. Banks and central banks can't be audited by you. Bitcoin can be. Think about that. Central banks have no predictability in monetary policy. Bitcoin does. Again, think about that. That can't be changed. These things can't be changed. Banks and central banks constantly rug pulling you all the time, stealing your wealth, bail-ins, bailouts, austerity, tax, inflation. Bitcoin just keeps on ticking. 10 minutes. TikTok next block. Perfectly predictable. Banks regularly blow up and lose their clients' deposits. Bitcoin doesn't when you hold in cold storage. And here's the predictable monetary supply of Bitcoin for you to see. And again, if you want to see the actual blog here, go to the link in the description where we have our blog. We give our monthly portfolio allocation letter to see using Bitcoin and many other assets outside the system, how we are able to 15x our net worth just in the last handful of years. If you want to go see that, go to the link in the bio. Bitcoin only goes to the wealthiest and already gone. Is it? Is that how, is that how it works? One of the most common criticisms of Bitcoin is that it will only flow to the wealthiest hands, making it a tool for the elite, the unproductive class, to maintain their wealth and power. Fortunately for the average pleb, this is not the case. Bitcoin's proof of work mechanism guarantees that it won't happen because Bitcoin will only change hands through actual work in the form of labor, time, energy, intelligence, etc. Not grift and not graft. Not po politics, not BS, not the stuff we see all over the place now. Suckling at the tea, brown nosing, gone. The process of mining Bitcoin involves solving complex mathematical equations, which requires a significant amount of computational power and energy. This means that only those who are willing to invest the time and energy and resources required to mine Bitcoin will be able to acquire it. It is a merit-based system that rewards hard work and innovation. Again, or you can work for it. You can actually provide work and value to the market. Another way to acquire Bitcoin, just like mining it. You have to spend some type of energy. You have to spend money or you have to spend your actual time and energy. Those are the two main ways, really, to obtain Bitcoin. That's it. Why does no one ask us about the current system? Why? Like we said in the beginning, another important question to ask is why only a few thousand people hold the majority of the world's wealth? Look at the Forbes 400. Look at it. No one sits there. People applaud it. They laud it. But yet they scrutinize Bitcoin for being too centralized in a few hands. This is a valid concern and one that we should be addressing. However, the difference between the centralized wealth distribution of fiat currency and the decentralized distribution of Bitcoin is that the latter has the potential to fairly and evenly distribute over time. Bitcoin's proof of work mechanism rewards those who contribute to the network, which means that the most productive members of society are more likely to acquire Bitcoin. Over time, this could lead to a more equitable distribution of wealth and power. Whether you are working at McDonald's or you're a doctor, or if you have more, if you save more than you spend, you can retire with dignity and become wealthy. Something that cannot be said, literally factually cannot be said in the fiat legacy monetary system. Go ahead, try, try and save your way to wealth with 0.01% interest rates in your bank accounts, your ETFs, what have you. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. Ellen Toffler from the book Future Shock decades ago wrote, the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. Humans have a hard time changing, and Ellen Toffler's book highlights this fact. Future Shock does an incredible job of doing just this. To be successful in the future, we will need to be good at learning, unlearning, and relearning. There's no doubt about that. This applies to Bitcoin as well. We need to unlearn what we have been taught about the traditional fiat currency system, formal education, and politics, and relearn what money really represents our time and energy. We need to understand that fiat currency is broken and that we must transition to a fair, sound money, finite system to create equal playing field, not equal outcomes, equal playing field, e e equity, justice, DEI, diversity, equity, conclusion, inclusion. If people actually want that on both sides of the aisle, actually a fair playing field on the right and diversity, equity, inclusion on the left, guess what? Bitcoin is your money. Bitcoin is your asset. 
Most people have a hard time accepting this because they've grown up only being taught the fiat system. The choice is truly ours. If we continue to rely on traditional fiat currency, we will continue to be at the mercy of banks, central banks, and governments, and everyone in the unproductive class who steal our time and energy through inflation. Humans know change is needed to go. Humans know change is needed, but go to politics to seek it, and we'll only get more of the same. As Jeff Booth says, you cannot change the current reality from the current system. We need to transition to a sound money system that is perfectly equal and finite to our finite time and energy. Sounds simple, right? Sounds easy. When you lay it out, the choice is ours to make. We can either face the pain of discipline and learn about Bitcoin and its potential for creating a fair economic system, or we can face the pain of regret and more of the same. Bitcoin is not a perfect solution, but it offers a way forward that is fair, more transparent, and more secure than our current system. By embracing correct definitions, the weaponization of language is big right now, but by embracing correct definitions and sound money principles, we can work towards creating a more equitable world where our time and energy are valued and protected rather than being stolen through inflation and do-gooders in the unproductive class. Stay strong. I appreciate you coming to my TED Talk. Question everything with boldness, even the existence of God himself. For if there is a God, surely he would appreciate that over blindfolded fear. Please share this out. The algorithm hates truth. And the faster, the faster we share truth, the closer and the faster we get to this world of abundance, cheap energy, higher standards of living, and lower costs. So please share this out. Any signal you find on the internet at all. Anything that goes against the mainstream narrative, to be quite honest. Let's be really real. So I appreciate you more than you know. I look forward to seeing you on the next one.